Recently, I tried to do a soul link with a fellow Nuzlocker friend of mine, Wacko. Highly recommend you check out his channel, links are going to be in the description. If you don't know what a soul link is, then it's essentially a Nuzlocke, but every Pokemon we encounter are going to be paired up and linked together. This means that they have to be in our parties at the same time, they have to be in the box at the same time, and if one of them faints, they both faint at the same time. There's also an additional rule that we can't use Pokemon of the same primary typing, but this rule kind of changes here and there, so I'll explain it when we get to it. We're going to be hardcore Nuzlocking Pokemon Black 2 on Challenge Mode. This means that not only are the trainers going to be more difficult, they have stronger Pokemon and better AI. Additionally, everything is randomized. If you do enjoy this video, then please like and subscribe, and go check out my channel. I do tons of Nuzlocke content, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Black 2 on Challenge Mode is already a pretty difficult game, so how will randomizing all the Pokemon change the Soul Link? Well, for our first attempt, we started by asking Bianca for our randomized starters, and here's what we got. So my starters are cracked. And I don't care which one I choose, so you can choose. I got Magnemite, Nidoran Male, Rhyhorn. So I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna give, get Magnemite, you take the Torchic. All right, that sounds great. In the starter menu, both Wacko and I have to choose the same pairs of starters, which means if I choose the left starter, he also has to choose the left starter. Since all of Wacko's starters were really good, I went with Magnemite, which was the best starter for me, which gave him a Torchic. Now, something that I'm sure a lot of you are asking to yourselves is, that's such a good starting pair. Is that even fair? Trust me, it's more than fair. In Pokemon Black 2, you only get four encounters before Gym 1. And of those encounters, we got a Levani Oddish, Jellicent Magby, and a Houndoom Winsicott pair. There's a lot of type overlaps, and you might be trying to work out which Pokemon is the best to bring out, but it doesn't even matter because Wacko got Dragon Rage swept at the first rival fight. Before we actually started this challenge, Wacko and I talked about how easy a soul link like this would be, how it would take maybe a couple attempts at most. We were so wrong. The second attempt didn't even go that far. Wacko just straight up lost his starter through the very first Pokemon. Attempt 3 had some great encounters. We had a Cyndaquil Vanilla as our starter, Archaeops Clang, and Tauros Gliscor. We actually made it to the first gym, which was the furthest run so far. Gliscor cleaned through Charon on my side, but Wacko was struggling a bit. He had some really tough Pokemon to face, and when it came down to Krabby versus Archaeops, Archaeops just couldn't land the kill. The HUG! Please! Uh, oh! No! Wait, it used Vice Grip! Why? It killed me! Do you think I should have swapped there? Dude, would you have swapped? Whoa. I could have just picked a different Pokemon to sack. Still, the run was alive, so we both thought that this was the run. Until I ran into an optional with a Kyogre. Surprisingly, I didn't make it out with just Murkrow dead, so the run is still technically alive. We fought through the gym trainers and eventually reached Roxy with a semi-decent team. Gliscor, Quilava, Bagon on my side, and Tauros, Vanillite, Nidoqueen on his. Tauros put in work for his battle, so it was really all up to me. Gliscor started nicely by poison jamming Simisage, but all hopes were lost when she pulled out a Jirachi. The Steel Psychic type perfectly countered my Gliscor since we didn't have access to ground moves. Despite Quilava being super effective, we just couldn't get past Jirachi's massive special defense and eventually wiped to Roxy. That was attempt 3. Attempts 4 and 5 weren't any better. We had a lot of overlapping types on attempt 4, so Wacko didn't really have the best team going into Charon's gym battle. Attempt 5 was even worse. Groudon knocked out his Oshawa and overleveled his Gigalith, so all he had going into the next trainer was an unknown. Attempt 6 was on me. A random trainer brought out a Quillfish and immediately started minimizing. I couldn't hit the Quillfish and I got swept. The next one that made it to Charon was our 7th attempt. Wacko had an easy battle with Butterfree and Mawile being the MVPs, so again, it was up to me to make progress. I started the battle with Zubat, but had to sacrifice it to the Beldum. We had a close call against the Pidgeot, but he used a quick attack and knocked out Lantern, arguably the most valuable Pokemon thus far. Unpheasant was put to sleep early in the battle, so I had to bring it out still sleeping. We tried to use quick attacks, but we just refused to wake up. Finally, after being taken down to 2 HP, does Unpheasant finally decide to wake up and knock out the Pidgeot? This left Charon with a paralyzed Politoed against my nearly dead Unpheasant and Hoppip. This looks like a winning situation, but we're actually so lost. Hoppip has no attacking moves and could only deal damage through poison. Since Poly was already paralyzed, that wasn't an option. So unless Unpheasant could crit this air cutter, we were doomed to lose. I don't even know what you were supposed to do there. 
Attempt 8 was the last run of our stream. We'd been going for 6 hours already, so if this wasn't the run, then we would just set it aside and try again next week. Blink. Yeah, it was a it was a fun concept. Um, wow. A week later, fresh with energy, we were ready to tackle this challenge again, but with a bit of a rule change. We noticed that a lot of our Pokémon at the start had a lot of overlapping types, and we only end up getting to the gym leaders with 2, 3 Pokémon. It doesn't seem that bad, but in a blind Nuzlocke where everything counts, we're gonna need all the advantage we can get. So we changed the rules so that pairs of Pokémon can't be the same primary typing, but we would still be allowed to use other pairs of Pokémon that did have the same primary typing. This way, we wouldn't be limited by the number of Pokémon that we have, but we'd still keep some sort of variety. This challenge is mainly a Soul Link, not a type lock. Also, we did ban legendary Pokémon because we don't need them. <laughs> we're professional Nuzlockers. We were feeling confident for this stream. The rule set was more fair, so we knew that today, we would get the run. The first attempt of the day started great. We each had some great encounters, Magmar Voltorb, Golduck Lucario, Beedrill Lipard, and Shinx Jigglypuff. We each made it to the first gym fight, and Wago had a pretty difficult start. I'm fast, so that's good. Okay. I think I have to risk a crit. I could go for the Disable to stop it from using Bone Club, obviously, which would make it have to use Headbutt and it would do less damage, whatever. The thing is, if it Headbutts, I'm I'm just in a bad spot right now. I think I Scratch and then I Headbutt. What do you wait, wait, think? Or not wait, Headbutt, wait, wait. Water Gun. But listen, if I can, if I go Disable here, it'll use Headbutt. I can switch back to Magmar on, fl and, and add, that has Flame Body. I think that's the play. Okay. Okay. I'm sending it. I want to watch you do your thing. I want to see this. All right, I hit the disable. Show me headbutt. Into flame body proc. Okay. Okay, I didn't get the flame body proc, but I do get the ember off. Please burn this thing. Yes! I got it. You got it? Sorry, I got my uh, own issues to deal with. <laughs> I look over at your screen. <laughs> Oh man, he's fighting Zekrom! Eventually, we both won against Charon, and for the second time, we go on to face Roxy. Wacko and I talked about this on stream, and we both agreed that the game really opens up once we get to Castilia City. So many more encounters and a lot more items to use. So as long as we can hold out against Roxy and reach Castilia, we're golden. With this in mind, let's go over my fight. I started the battle with Marowak out against a Torterra, a losing matchup. I didn't have the best offenses since Wacko killed his Golduck in the Charon fight, so I didn't have access to my Lucario. We also had to pass up on a Bisharp Spiritomb encounter because they shared the dark typing. I swapped into my Voltorb, which was the only thing that could do reliable damage since it had Sonic Boom, but even a Torterra was too bulky, so it knocked out my Voltorb. Wacko already killed my Lipard because his Beedrill got crit, so I decided to send out Lipard, dealing as much damage as it can, and then sacking him since it's dead anyway. This took out the Torterra and did massive damage to Loudred, but Eventually, it died to a pound. I finished off the Loudred with a return, and now we're back in a winning position. This could be our best run yet. And then she sends out a Drift Blim. What the f How unlucky. I know what you're thinking. For people who Nuzlocke for a living, they aren't that good. Trust me, I had that thought too. But attempt 10 was the run. We made it to Charon with a pretty solid team. Axel Gorgatini, Finio on Mianfu, Solosis and Golette, and probably the best pairing of all was Hitmonlee Slackoth. We both made it out of the Charon fight Deathless, Axelcor carried on my side, and the combination of Yon on Slackoth and Golette carried for Wacko. We even both battled against a legendary Pokemon, me against a Mesprit, and Wacko against a Regigigas. When it came to Roxy, the fights were even easier. Dragon Rage from Wacko's side completely demolished Roxy. On my side, Hidden Power Ice from Solosis froze up the Fero as Reckless Jump Kick from Hitmonlee creamed through the Meowth and Stoutland. Finally, we've actually made some progress. This was the best run yet. We've made it past the Gym 2 curse! We broke the Gym 2 curse! Remember how I said that the game really opens up at Castelia? Well, here we get some amazing encounters. Croconaut Escavalier, Lipard Braviary, and Bronzong Zubat. We are finally stacking up our teams. Our battle with Brig was easy enough. Max Friendship returns on my side did the trick, and Wacko's Vigoroth could yawn things to sleep, so the third badge was easily in our possession. Before Lisa, we have to face Colrus, which goes easily enough for both of us, and we go on to catch one of the best pairs yet, Tentacle Tyranitar. Okay, I got a good encounter. I got Tentacool. I got Tyranitar. Tentatar! Yes. 
We catch another few encounters, Pillowswine Litwick, Magneton Huntail, before going on to face Elisa. With a whole new bunch of encounters, we take a moment to prep before facing Elisa. The team that we ultimately decided on was Liveary, Brobat, Escavenaw, Slackmon Lee, Magnail, and Tentatar. My side of the battle went smoothly. Slackmon Lee could one shot the Larvitar, and Tentatar could crush the Sigilith. Serpiri was a much bulkier Pokemon, but the sheer damage from Reckless High Jump Kick paired with Wide Lens easily dismisses the Superior. Finally, our Escavna solidly walls the Embor to earn us the Bolt Batch. Wacko had a much breezier time against Elisa, Frillish, Emolga, and Piplo. He did have a final Gardevoir to worry about, but overall, a much easier time. Bro, my Elisa was actual, like, cake, bro. It was so easy. I got an encounter. It's a Nocturnal one. Frillish. Oh, we get the static, the gift encounter though. It's, I think it's guaranteed to have good IVs. I got a, I got a, a plus speed star to you. Oh, no, no. I got a, I got a chin chew. Ah, dang, that's unlucky. At uh, least we have each other. We have each other, Doc, okay? No shot, bro. Please get a get grass type. Pachirisu. Pachi Flora, let's get it, boys. I uh, I just re-rolled and I got Unpheasant, so roll Keldeo again. Actually, Unpheasant Space. Nope, I got Kakuna. What's the worst name we can come up with for these two? We take the UN from your name and the UNA from my name. Un Una. Una. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give a quick heal to my Pokemon and then I'll, I'll be ready to go. I, I started the battle. I will wait for you on the first mod. I'm Bye -bye. so sorry. Oh boy, Nian Xiao, one of the few Pokemon that can actually outspeed my life hard, right? Fighting type honestly decimates my team. Oh, this is the one type that actually ruins me is ice types. Wait, Loki, I set up, I should set up Toxic Spikes here. And you know what? I'm gonna set up three barriers too. Honor <laughs> of the Timstale Dimido. Beautiful. I can't kill this thing. <laughs> Eventually, Wacko was able to defeat the Dugong as well as the other team members without too much difficulty. Afterwards, there's a bit of story progression that neither of us finds too difficult. We push forward to the next couple of areas to get some new encounters. In Mastralton Cave, I get a Gardevoir that's paired with his Crocorock, and I get a Samurai in Gaiden's Chamber paired with his Absol. These were two great pairs of Pokemon, but we didn't really end up using them too much. Both of the Pokemon on my side were crippled by bad natures and horrible IVs, which made them no better to use than the Pokemon we already had. We make it past Chargestone Cave and bust through the gym trainers in Ms. Stralton Gym, and before you know it, we're both at Skyla. We don't even get the next encounters because we're that confident in our abilities. I hope they don't pull out some Garbo Garbo Pokemon, right? I hope they actually pull out some good Pokemon. This isn't a good matchup at all. I actually kind of get rolled by fighting types. Yeah, there's that close combat we predicted. Jeez, that's a lot of damage. Just live a crit, live a crit, low roll, live a crit. Okay. I, I I don't know. There's nothing I can do about that. I have to play into this. Hey, um, I'm using my uh, Escavalier and Charmander just swapped in. Uh, should I stay in or? Is that your only option? No, oh, wait, right? no, I could. I have Tana Cruel and Huntail in the pocket. I was just. Oh yeah, then go Tana Cruel Huntail. One of those two. Okay, yeah. It used Flamethrower, so um, Escavalier's yeah. dead. What? Did you not? I'm totally messing with you. Good, <laughs> good luck in your fight, man. Ah! We got that. The next couple of encounters come from the areas after Miss Stralton Gym. I accidentally kill the Dunsparce, so we don't get an encounter there, but we do get a Krabby Gabite pair in the Celestial Tower. Further down the road towards the next gym, we get a few more pairs of Pokemon. Basculin Claydol, Azumarill Arbok, Trubbish Vanillish, Seismitoad Blaziken, and Boldor Electabuzz. There was an interruption by a rifle asking us to battle him, but we both brushed him off pretty easily. Once we got to Lacanosa Town, we're stopped by a Plasma Grunt and a Sage Zinzolin. This is actually one of the run killers in Black and White 2, and he's no different in his challenge. Uh, yeah, so in this double battle, it's currently me versus, uh, me and Gothitelle versus Radita and Patrat. Wait, literally two rat Pokemon? 
That's what I'm saying. Bro, no way. Entei? Entei. The final mod is happening. Okay, we had to play into this crit here. Perfect. Everything played off. Dude, I don't know. There seems to be a trend where you seem to get. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to make it sound bad, but like, you, it seems like your opponents are a little bit easier than mine, just slightly. No shot, no? bro. Okay, I got lucky so? this one time, but our Pokemon were close. Happiny, Patchrat, Radida, and Escavalier. Okay, Escavalier is pretty good. Right. I mean, I opened with Blaziken, but that's not the point. It was close. Well, if this guy, if this guy has an NK, I can only imagine what he has next. Please, right. just do your work, Archeops. Thank you. Oh my god. What? Bro, it's Hydreigon. <laughs> Bro! And why is level 48? I still stand by uh, the fact that you got easier Pokemon than me. I think in this particular fight, you might, you, you might be on to something. Right, right, right. Potentially, you know. Maybe. That's just maybe. so funny! <laughs> With Zinzalin defeated, we can first get a Lickitung Nidoqueen pair on Route 13 before something interesting happens at the Village Bridge. First, we roll a Groudon Sharpedo pair, which gets re-rolled because Groudon's a legendary. I then run into another Groudon, but this time as I'm trying to run, Bronzon gets crit by a Lava Plume, which instantly kills Wacko's Crobat. Okay, so I kind of rolled a Groudon, and it kind of killed my uh, Bronzong because it crit a Lava Plume. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I could use a flying or levitate mod at this point then. This is unfortunate because the sun's also up by drought, but we have to power through. I try to go for another encounter and run into a Groudon again. Now, it doesn't seem like it, but Groudon is deceptively fast. I try to run away with my Tyranitar in the lead, and a hammer arm creams my Tyranitar. I got, there's a lot of Dude, that this Groudon run. keeps rolling me. It killed Tyranitar. <laughs> You killed Tentator! I can't- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't get out of this tight this Groudon loop. Eventually, we do reach a usable Pokemon in Rhydon, and as I'm chipping it down to make it easier to catch, I... kill the Rhydon. You're just I released not... my favorite Pokemon twice now because of you. <laughs> Swallow is my baby. Swallow is literally my favorite Pokemon in the whole series, and you sold twice! Yep. I just cost us three Pokemon. But hey, think of it this way. Now the Nuzlocke is actually more of a challenge since I kind of thought that it was too easy. We also do manage to catch a Clang Clang Kingdra pair, so we're actually not doing that bad. Our fight with Drayden was very straightforward. We each had to face some strong Pokemon, but both of our opponents also had a baby Pokemon on the team, which made the battles a lot easier. Beautiful. I ran into a Cyndaquil, which doesn't sound scary, but it had Inferno and it hit yeah. twice. I was gonna and ask then, about that. Did you, um, force, uh, what's it called, fully evolve? No. There's actually a very easy fix to this. You'll still have all the same Pokemon, all the same progress, but right. now you're gonna have, like, updated random teams. Right. Um... Right. You're scared of this not working? No, I'm not scared of it not working. Okay, I'm down. So what you just saw there was me trying to make the challenge a little bit more consistent. As funny as it would be to see a Sunkern in the Elite Four, it's not really the type of challenge that we're aiming for. We're professional Nuzlockers, right? We need the difficulty. Anyway, as we're making it past the Plasma Grunts, I can already see the spike in difficulty. Ooh, wow. I like this challenge. I like this challenge. Oh, man. Titar, awesome. Lava Plume, live, live. Oh, so easy, actually. Oh my god. On the way to Humalao City, we catch ourselves two more encounters, Scraggy Squirtle and Luxury Lillipup. This brings us to the eighth gym, where we can now see a real spike in difficulty. My side led with a Wobbuffet while Wacko got to face a Behien. I knew that Wobbuffet could counter to kill my Gigalith, so I tried to stall a few turns to try and scout its attack pattern. After seeing a couple turns of Miracle for some reason, I decide to go for a Stone Edge. Only this time, instead of retaliating with Miracle, he goes for the correct counter, which brings me down to Sturdy. On Wacko's side, he swapped into Absol, which was better suited to face Behem, but at the same time, Marlin also swapped into a Garchomp. He already set up a Sword Stance on the Garchomp switch, so swapping out would be a waste, and he decided to go for a Sucker Punch to outspeed Garchomp, but it only brought him down to red health. Miraculously, Absol lives the Dragon Claw in red HP. Now, you might have not noticed, but Garchomp has the rough skin ability. 
Unfortunately, Wacko didn't notice either, and Tunnel Vision got the best of him. Oh, this has rough skin. Did I just die? Did I just kill myself? I... Ah! Absol is dead. I oh. might have to make a sacrifice play myself too. It, it's got counter and, and stone edge. Barely doesn't two-shot it. So if I hit it again, it's going to counter and kill me. So I think I have to explosion here. At this point, it seems like the AI for Wobbuffet is just random, and I can try to stall more turns, but eventually I will have to attack. I decide against Explosion and just try to hit another Stone Edge, but we didn't get the kill and counter knocked down my Gigalith. The rest of the battle was easy though. Samrock finished off the Wobbuffet, then I sacked it against the Haxorus to bring out Luxray. Luxray was then able to finish the Haxorus and Dodrio to earn me the victory. Wacko cleaned up nicely as well. Kingdra drowned the Registeel, Electivire shocked the Lomomola, and Behem got ghosted by the Golur. An easy finish. As you can see, the difficulty of the game changed drastically by forcing all the Pokemon to evolve. The trainers along the routes are no different. Between now and the end of the game is a huge chunk of story progression. We do get a couple more encounters, but we have to face so many tough battles. First, let's get our encounters. All right. On Route 21, I get a Torkoal, which pairs with Wacko's Riolu. And then in Seaside Cave, I get a Diglett that's linked to his mill tank. These are another two great sets of Pokemon, but again, the Pokemon on my side were crippled by bad stats. We have to go through several routes before we can actually reach the Plasma Frigate. Even then, we still have to crush through a ton of grunts before we can finally reach Zinzolin. Oh, come on. This is a double battle with AI? Alright, this is going to go well for me. What? Are you serious? Of course, I get the Raikou. I just killed a Quagsire, and now it's Machamp and Uxie. Okay. Pretty even then, pretty even. Can you kill the Raikou, please? Okay, make sure we swap, right? I wish I knew who that was going for, but... I'm not scared of this thing. I'm using Earthquake. Beautiful, beautiful. At least he did something. Beautiful, beautiful. Hot champ falls, last mon! This is objectively, Doc, the hardest randomizer I've ever seen. Like, in terms of nuzlocking. And that's good, right? Because that's what we want. We want to prove to everyone that we're good at nuzlocks. Or we're good at nuz- like, we're good nuzlockers. I mean, like, yeah, but also I want to win. I never doubted that we wouldn't win. I w I'm almost certain that we're going to win. I think I'm going to get through. I just got to wait for this, uh, for Alligator to fall. For Alligator falls. That should be the last one. Easy. A uh, double battle, just so you know. Yeah, I already ran into it, and I'm dealing Moltres Mammal Swine. Uh, I have Furret <laughs> and Alakazam, but I have Furret, okay, so that's hilarious. Okay. That's not the only legendary I have to face, though. There's also a Registeel in the back, and they have a Starmie and Rhyperior as support. Luckily, I do manage to squeeze my way out of trouble. Stab Surf knocks out the Mammal Swine and Moltres, and manages to kill the Rhyperior as well. Registeel slowly gets chipped down and eventually goes down to its burn damage, and then Starmie dies to a combination of Thunder Fang into Shadow Ball. Wacko got an easier hand. The Pokemon were still strong, but his team was much better suited to face the challenge. When it came to Zinzolin though, both of us cleanly swept him with Kingdra doing massive work on Wacko's side. Right after Zinzolin is another boss fight back to back. We have to face Colrus with our Excelgore against Azumarill, and Wacko starts Mian Xiao vs Heatran. Azumarill sets up a Rain Dance on the first turn as I hit a Giga Drain for just under half health. I hit a second Drain on the second turn, but it doesn't manage to kill. Pump. There's Pump. Oh my god. Wacko's side was a bit better. High Jump kept demolished the Heatran, and then he U turned into Houndoom for the Shadow Ball kill. Thank god I focus sacked my Excelgore. It, um, I told you, we're not losing that Dragonite. A Hydro Pump crit in the rain. Bro. No! Oh my god, I misclicked! I misclicked! I misclicked! No! I misclicked! Miss, miss, miss! Oh my god. Cringe! Yeah, that happened. Wacko cleaned up his side. Flamethrower killed the Electros, and Shadow Ball killed the Sigilyph. Finally, return from the Dragonite that he has a sack kills the Vile Plume. On my side, I finish off the Cast Form and have Clink Clang Discharge on the Dodrio. Lastly, the Frostlass is a little scary with Hail and Snow Cloak, but Surf from Luminion finishes the job. Beedrill's actually kind of cracked. I can't believe I just said those words out of my mouth, but it's actually kind of cracked. Ah, uh, yes, after you took down my Dragonite. Okay, uh, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. 
I gotta stop killing Pokemon. Oh my god. You know, you might be onto something with that one. Not even gonna like back me up here? No, no. We have like, we have like seven dead mods and five of them are for a... <laughs> Despite my best efforts to try and be better, there are still battles against the Shadow Triad, not to mention the big boss battle against Getsis. Remember that really cracked Beedrill I was talking about? Well, it was able to put in work against a Sceptile, but it instantly got creamed by Tail Slap from Chinchino. What? I, I know technically the difficulty is the same between me and Wacko, but like, look at this one triad. Oh my god, okay. Alright, alright, we got this, we got this. Hacks, we got this. We got this. What? What? Dude, I don't know, How, how's the fight looking on your end? If it makes you feel any better, I had to face Zekrom earlier and I kicked the butt. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Against Reshiram, I didn't really have a choice but to sacrifice for Alligator, which gave me the free switch into Luminion to take out the Reshiram. Not a great outcome, but it had to be done considering that our next battle was the big boss Getsis. Getsis had some really tough Pokemon and is definitely one of the run killers in this game. I started my fight with the Torkoal, and Wacko started his fight with the linked Lucario. Flamethrower easily dispatched the Amoongus, while Shadow Ball tore through the Dust Noir. I thought I could live a Stone Age from the Conkeldur and maybe get off a Flamethrower, but it absolutely proved me wrong by hitting a critical Stone Edge. On Wacko's side, Lucario straight up cleaned through Getsis, which is kind of a shame since now it has to die because it's linked to my Torkoal. This literally could survive. I'm plus one Spadef. What is going on? Uh, my uh, Torkolu swept that fight. Oh, uh, that's uh, music to my ears. Now, having known I just had to kill it. Just wanted you to know. <laughs> Thank you. I continue my side of the fight by hitting the foe's floatsel with a discharge, but not even being close to killing it. Kling Klang's in a pretty bad position right now, and I know the floatsel can outspeed and kill me with a crit, so I make the sacrifice by letting Lyapard die to bring in my Garchomp to safely kill the floatsel. As if that decision wasn't hard enough, Getsis decides to bring out another demon of a Pokemon. Oh my god, are you serious? The thing about a blind Nuzlocke is this, right? As much as you can try to plan, you can never plan for everything. Right now, despite being 5 levels higher, I know that I have a minus speed nature and imperfect IVs, so I can only deduce that I'm slower than Hydreigon. I swap into Jumpluff to possibly get off a Sleep Powder, and Hydreigon uses Work Up, boosting its offenses. This was probably the worst move it could have used. I was able to put him to sleep, so I hit a couple acrobatics to chip him down. I thought I could maybe take him out when he was in the yellow health, but then he got healed with a full restore, putting us back at square one. I put him back to sleep and hit a couple more acros before it eventually wakes up and knocks out Jumpluff. I sent in Kling Clang because it's my bulkiest Pokemon, and I went for the Volt Switch to get off some chip damage. Wait, we're faster? What? How fast are we? We're 123 speed. If this is neutral nature, I guess- oh Is this God. the slowest Hydreigon ever? Wait, hold on then. If this outspeeds the Hydreigon, then Garchomp can outspeed the Hydreigon. It's too late to have come to that realization now. I already attacked first without tanking a hit, so now I have to sacrifice Mamoswine because Garchomp will die to the Dragon Pulse. I don't have Ice Shard on Mamoswine either, so once Body Slam hits, Garchomp can come in and finish the battle. And the Tropius too. What a horrific battle. So now, now Croc of Wire is definitely part of the team. Yep. With that fight losing four more Pokemon, we were in some dire need of better encounters. One of the first pairs we got was Whiskash Dwebble, definitely an Elite Four contender. The next pair that was gifted to us was a Shieldon paired with a Gathita, another great pair. Unfortunately, the next few pairs didn't bode so well. Lampent on my side was a great catch, but not when it's paired with Wacko's Wismer. On the other hand, the next route handed him a Girder, which would have been paired with my Farfetch'd. Finally, our last pair of Pokemon was Crawdont and Mime Jr. Definitely a solid set of Pokemon, but not Elite Four worthy. With all of our encounters caught, the last thing that stands before us was Victory Road and the Elite Four. This stream had made some good progress, going from the 5th gym all the way to the Pokemon League. We end the stream at the league and 
pick it up next week where we would plan out our team and face our battles. The entire time going through the victory road, we were going up against tough Pokemon the whole time, so we did have to play into some risks. Wacko lost his Crocodile, making two back-to-back -back bad plays, and during the rival fight, I made a bad play myself. I'm actually sure I'm actually certain this dies to high jump kick. Oh my god. Alright, we'll break the news to him after. <sighs> it just has not been my day. To make things just a bit worse, I had to lose my current best Pokemon as well. Yeah, so anyways, your Garchomp's dead. Before ending the stream, we decided to tally up all the deaths to see who killed more Pokemon. Spoilers, it's me. Do you want to go through and tally who lost each one? Oh, it's definitely me. Definitely me. Blazer That's Toad true. was me. That was me. Okay. Uh, Robat was you. A uh, Tenatar was you. That's Giga Buzz was me. A uh, Bomberot was me. A uh, Dragor was you. So that's four to two. Una, Una. That was Beedrill, and that was you. Escavalier, uh, that was you. Escavana. Six two. Uh, Torcolu was you. That's seven two. Lyperi was you. Uh, mm -hmm. Litswine was you. That's nine two. Houndoom was uh, you. That's ten two. Gabby was me. Gabby was me. So that's ten three. Okay. That's okay. Croc of Wire was me. So that's Croc of Wire was you. Okay. And then and I killed Slackmon Lee. 11-4! 11-4, okay. With all possible encounters caught, we spent some time to figure out a plan. Of course, the battles were all randomized, so we need to figure out who are the best pairs for the both of us, and we were actually able to prep up a pretty decent team. The teams that we came up with were Scrafty Blastoise, Kling Clang Kingdra, Reuniclus Golurk, Bastiodon Gothitelle, Whiskash Crustle, and finally, Magnazone Huntail. These would be the teams to bring us to our Soul Link victory. The first member, Chantal, was very easy for me. Scrafty was Moxie and had Wildlands High Jump Kick to do massive damage. It killed the Exploud and set off the Moxie Sweep. One by one, all of Chantal's Pokemon were shut down. Wacko didn't have too much trouble either. Psychic from Gothitelle easily crushed Cradilly, and Shell Smash X Scissor from Crustle diced up Ferrothorn. Chantel's Conkeldur literally could not do anything to Golurk, and a single EQ crit knocked it out. Swampert was trouble though. It took both Huntail and Blastoise down to the red before Kingdra could finally serve to kill. Luckily, the Girafferig was light work and finished the battle with Chantal. The battles with Grimsley goes about the same as I did with Chantal. I start by EQing Magmortar and T-Bolting Tentacool, but when it came time to face the Durant, Fire Punch One Punch Man that Durant, and finish the rest of the fight with a Moxie Sweep. Wacko started his fight with Kingdra out against an Arcanine. He was afraid of not killing the Arcanine and being retaliated with an Outrage, so he swapped into Golurk to use EQ. The Walrein that came out next was pretty difficult for him to counter. He swapped into Blastoise which had the best resistance against Walrein, but when it got hit by an Ice Fang, his Blastoise got frozen. He switched into his Kingdra to set up Dragon Dances and thankfully was able to finish the Walrein with an Outrage. Dugong went down on the next turn to an Outrage, as well as the next Slowking. So the last Pokemon for Wacko to deal with was Clang Clang, which got crushed by an EQ. Another simple E4 battle. At this point, I'm really liking the Moxie Sweep, so I lead Scrafty into the Caitlyn fight against an Abomasnow. Obviously a one-shot with Fire Punch. We get to pick up another free kill when her Fortress comes in next. In fact, the rest of her team was free with so many attack boosts. Wacko, on the other hand, was struggling. He immediately swapped out of Kingdra, but then his Golurk got immediately put to sleep. Fortunately, Chinchino didn't have any attacking moves, so eventually his Golurk could wake up and kill the Chinchino. Her second Pokemon was Dustox. Golurk got the kill with Fly, but got poisoned on the way out. The next Toxicroak was weak to Earthquake though, so he was able to pick up a free kill. He swapped a Crustle when Caitlyn sent out Watchog, and two x Scissors gave him the kill. The final Pokemon was a scary Electivire, but he simply swapped back into Golurk, and EQ finished the fight. With three Elite Four members down, only Marshall stands between us and the champion. If you haven't picked up a pattern with my fights, then you know I want to be Moxie Sweeping. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case with Marshall. I got to Thunder Punch kill the Butterfree, but when a tanky Conkeldur comes out, I knew that I'd have to make a switch. Thankfully, I still have, you know, the rest of my team. I swap in Reuniclus to tank the hits, and I kill the Conkeldur with a single Psychic. I pivot through Basudon into Magnezone and Signal Beam to kill Electros. The incoming Sandslash sees an Earthquake as a kill, so Whiskash tanks the hit and Surf one-shot Sandslash. Whiskash doesn't really have the best matchup against Pidgeot, but I can easily send in Kling Clang to finish the job. Also, Marshall's Pokemon are still holding the original Pokemon's items, so as Kling Clang swaps in, Pidgeot gets burned by the Flame Orb it's still holding. 
This makes the job with Kling Klang much easier to kill. Wacko's fight goes about the same. He set up a couple dragon dances with Kingdra, then outraged to kill Superior and Shift Dream. He sent out Crustle to exit a Crocodile, then stalled the Suicune with Blastoise. Lastly, he finished up the fight by Earthquake and Spinda, earning the victory. And with that, all four members have been defeated, and the champion is the last opponent in our way. I guess it's just champion time then, right? Yeah. Oh man, yes, yeah, it's, it's champion time. Oh man, I'm going down. Not as, it, it. not as in I'm going to lose, as in like I had to take the little portal thing. You know what I'm saying? We must restore the severed links of our Pokemon, bring them all out on the other side. If we bring this out deathless, everybody, go sub to our YouTube, go sub <laughs> to our Twitch, turn on notifications, everything. Youngster Joey. <laughs> oh, interesting. Whisk hack. Okay. Literally, I called it. I called it. I told you. We have a huge fighting and ground weakness, and that's the only reason we have Grass Knot on our Reuniclus. Wise Glasses, Wing Attack, Pidgeot. Oh, right. The last Pokemon does have Focus Sack. We will have to be careful about that. Okay. Last mod is Sash. Great. Okay. Okay, it's not D Knight. D Knight isn't the Sashmon. I don't know what D Knight has. Probably, I don't know. Life Orb, Flying Gem, Muscle Band, or Wide Lens. One of the four. And we Earthquake. I know it's physically very frail. Like, even like defensively, it's very frail. Beauty. Okay. Okay. This is the Focus Ash Pokemon. I'm actually gonna go here for the Signal Beam. This is... Bro, there's no way the Sashmon is Jirachi, bro. That's the thing. This is Focus Sash because it's the highest level Pokemon. It's probably a heal here. Let's go Signal Beam. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go. Bro, life is so hard, man. Oh no. Stop it. It has double edge. Stop it. Okay, Misty Inferno, we'll take that. Uh, it's weaker physically, so we'll hit it with the Earthquake. Second Inferno miss. That's good, because if, if Inferno hits, then uh, it burns us having our def attack. Easy swap into Scrafty. High jump kick, wide lens, high jump kick. 99% accurate. I haven't sent Hunt Tailed in to do anything. I'm gonna shell smash. You ready? Bro, I'm not even worried. It's gonna, bro, it's literally gonna be paired here, so I don't care. Shell smash again. Okay. Flex on it. Flex on it. Okay, fine. I'm down for round two. We can do this all day, Seeking. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> is that the last Pokemon? It is. This has to kill, right? Plus one. Definitely MVP, Scrafty. GG's, brother. 
I did, I will say, I did sack some Pokemon for fun, but it wasn't ever out of my control. We beat the hardest Soul Link randomizer. Black 2 challenge mode. Everything fully evolved. It wouldn't have been a good ending if, it, if I didn't force everything to evolve. Of course, if you guys stuck to the end and love Nuzlocke content, then I highly recommend you check out Wacko's channel. Great YouTuber, great Nuzlocker, I'm sure you'll love him. I really love this challenge, so if you guys have any ideas as to what challenge I should do or who I should do another Soul Link with, then please let me know in the comments below. I think I want to try a Soul Link in Renplat, so stay tuned for that.